What's the personality type of Jenna Ortega from Netflix's new show, Wednesday? Well, I just wrapped up watching about three, three and a half hours of live streams, old clips, and holy crap, she is a tricky personality type to pin down. In today's video, here are some of the interesting personality patterns I found and what I think her personality type might be. Deadpan. Oh my God, that's so you. You're so good at that. Oh, I thought you were saying I'm so deadpan. No, I get that no. a lot too. <laughs> yeah. You do? Yeah. Yeah, I get that all the time. Okay, so the first personality pattern that's extremely noticeable watching Jenna Ortega is she does not use any extroverted feeling at all. Hello. I guess I could kind of wait for more people to get on, but it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna see if there's any questions or something because the comments are kind of monotonous. In her interviews and live streams, it was clear Jenna's someone that doesn't ever like to fake how she's feeling for other people and instead just prefers to just completely be herself and stay on task, even if it means being completely monotone and deadpan. Oh, Wednesday Adams is a legend. I think she's one of the coolest people on the planet, whether that be the way that she handles certain social media. During her interviews, I noticed Jenna had this pretty intense stare, seemed pretty controlled and put together, had this quiet, strong confidence, presence about her, and it really didn't matter at all how many people were laughing around her, if other people were smiling at her, trying to make her laugh, if she didn't personally feel that funny, if it didn't feel necessary or natural to react, she just wouldn't. Watching Jenna, it was clear she definitely uses introverted feeling somewhere in her personality type. But the specific blunt, completely unbothered, very unemotional way that it showed up with her, it really, really caught my attention. The next little thing I learned watching Jenna was that apparently some of her castmates have said that she's in real life sort of like Wednesday Adams. Sometimes I would say something as a joke and I think I have a very dark sense of humor and she'd go, ooh. Uh, that's dark. A couple of the other cast members said that you are so similar to Wednesday. I think I said something off camera and he said, I think you're more Wednesday than Wednesday. If you've seen the show, that's not a casual comment. That's actually a pretty strong statement. Definitely something where I was like, okay, I want to pay attention to that. What are they actually talking about? Okay, now the next small thing I noticed watching Jenna was she seems to sometimes really have fun locking in on the experience of things. You used to perform autopsies on little animals, like little lizards that I found that were dead in my back. I stayed awake, they just numb my mouth. There was like a mirror right above me so I could see what was happening in my mouth. The outside playground that seemed to sometimes really catch her attention seemed most fun for her to talk about, describe, and immerse herself in. It was never really an idea playground, an extroverted, intuitive, more mental, open type of exploring she liked doing in her head. Oh, let's brainstorm. Let's think about this completely differently. What would that mean to me? No. And he cracked the tooth and I looked at him, I watched it because I'm weird. Kind of look like an alien because you just have like this long tinfoil. And then they put a bald cap on you and then they- With her, the things Jenna seemed most naturally drawn to, drawn to talk about, describe, interact with, and explore. I noticed it often be these real life sensory things, actual concrete observations and experiences that she'd reference in this pretty clear, straightforward, this was going on and then this happened and then this happened sort of way, which points to her personal personality type definitely using extroverted sensing somewhere in her personality type. I'm not a very social person, generally more of a private person. I don't say much about my personal life. Moving on, the next couple things I learned watching Jenna is she talks about being sort of socially awkward, being more on the private side. And then another small thing that again pointed to Jenna definitely not using extroverted intuition or introverted sensing was the fact that whenever her past experiences were brought up, she would always talk about them in a very disconnected way. Like they were just things that happened, just sort of like a fuzzy memory to her that she didn't relate very strongly to and definitely definitely didn't focus on or dwell on. And stuck in the middle. It doesn't even feel like it was a part of my lifetime. I feel like I'm a different person every day, but definitely every two years, it's an entire shift. What was the funniest scene in a movie I made? What movies have I made? What have I, uh, my mind just went entirely blank. I'm trying to think of something where we all were laughing and we shouldn't have. Okay, now this one, this was really unexpected, but a very clear, consistent pattern. Although Jenna definitely does use introverted feelings somewhere in her personality type, I noticed Jenna doesn't really talk about herself very much at all, reference herself naturally. I don't really know what to say about myself. I've just been, um, hanging out. 
you know, is everybody vaccinated? Even during her super long live streams where she was being asked questions about herself and what she liked, it really caught my attention seeing her never jump to share her personal feelings about things, share things more from her individual personal perspective. But instead, like 95% of the time, she'd talk about things in a more detached way, keep things more impersonal or superficial, mostly talking about outside things she was doing, things she was working on, things going on around her or if she had to talk about herself in this very disconnected matter-of-fact way she just describe herself describe different things about her without seeming to care that much about expressing herself as an individual express her more personal feelings about things and even now it's kind of weird talking about emotional stuff I think it's just the way that we all naturally are I love to run I love to play soccer growing typically up. when I'm in new areas I just go for a walk after seeing this personality pattern over and over again in the hours of clips that I watched, I actually don't think it's possible for Jenna to be an FP personality type. Because no matter what FP personality type you are, FP personality types like expressing themselves, like referencing their personal feelings about things in a way that Jenna just never did, never seemed to care about. And then on top of that, you have the fact that Jenna, her face, it just like has no emotion at all, which would really be super, super bizarre if she actually was an SFP personality type. I know. It was weird. We, we didn't even, it was just like, we just both knew not to mention her name. You know, I was surprised to see this, but I actually think that Jenna Ortega uses quite a bit of introverted intuition and quite comfortably. Over and over again, I kept seeing her do this very NJ personality type thing where she'd pause to sort of stew on things in her head. She'd be answering questions and then suddenly just drift off into her mind, sort of like zone out or briefly go into this little like internal trance for a second. And then she would come back. Something seemed to come to mind for her and then she she'd start being a lot more present and sharing her thoughts again. It's hard to fully explain, but that's a very NJ introverted intuitive personality pattern lining up with the same introverted intuitive personality patterns I found in Jenna's speaking. I noticed in the clips where Jenna had more wiggle room to just share whatever she wanted, she kept having this stream of consciousness tunneling forward, like rolling ball way of sharing her ideas. What about the world of horror like really appeals to you? It's pure entertainment. It's pure fun. I think they're the best sets to be on because everyone wants to be there. Mm. And no one's taking themselves too seriously because the whole point, I think, I think I, I love all genres. I really do. And I do want to get into more drama. But the thing is, you're not trying to impress people necessarily. You're trying to give people a good time. And I think when you make it too serious is when it gets kind of muddled and, and not as exciting. But, you know, you want to give people that, that rush of adrenaline. And also, for some reason, I don't know what it is about my face, but people just seem to really want to throw blood on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> this rolling ball way of talking about things, describing things, sharing ideas, and connections. It's a very NJ, introverted intuitive personality pattern. In real life, I've talked with lots and lots of introverted intuitives, and they sometimes describe feeling like there's this soup of patterns, observations, connections, this intuitive ball of yarn in their head. And sometimes when they're asked about something, it feels like this little thread pops up out of the ball of yarn and they start pulling on it, pulling forward with that idea and other intertwined connected ideas and patterns start coming along with it and they just start pulling and pulling and pulling, not ever exactly sure when that thread is gonna end. But for NJ personality types, pulling on that thread, expressing their ideas in this specific way, it's their favorite way to share with other people how they see things, what they're noticing, their own personal sense of the world and how they feel lots of different things are connected and related around them. Okay, now the last major personality pattern I noticed watching Jenna, when I paid close attention to the way Jenna would phrase things, her general approach to things, when her emotions would be there and not be there at all, I actually started seeing lots of strong signals for extrovert thinking coming from Jenna Ortega, which was not at all what I was expecting. Like just tell them or do you just take their side? I tell them. Pain in my nails. Oh, you and did them approximately yourself. twenty seconds. Yeah, because I've been job to job and they were chipped and thank you. Okay, I did all this right. Five minutes ago. Just get it over with. Do as many as. Make sure they're satisfied and 
move on. In the clips that I watched, Jenna showed a lot of detached, extroverted thinking pragmatism. This sort of like, what will get the job done? What will get results? How can I look at this in an unemotional way? Just focus on what's necessary to make things happen and keep things progressing forward. That's kind of, I think, why I'm motivated or determined to do so well or do so, you know, whatever. Opportunities like this do not come very often. And when I was younger, I used to say I always wanted to write a book. So now I can cross that off the bucket list. And it was nice. I think that she knew that it probably wouldn't benefit me in any way. I noticed Jenna, she's naturally very results and work oriented. She even starts sometimes smiling or getting a little bit more excited and passionate when she's talking about competency, being good at something, working hard to do something really, really well. As soon as I turned 18, I kicked them out. Uh, that was yeah, it. yeah, I was like, like, you need to go home and worry about the other children. I got this. I really should do more. Because of my height, my body kind of said, you should be able to run in heels. So I can, it's probably what I'm best at. If I'm lifting weights or something, I just know that my form is 100% correct because I know exactly what I'm doing. So I learned all of the sword fighting and the fencing and I knew that I wanted to do myself. My fencing teacher did say that he wished that he had had me when I was 10. Not to brag though, I'm not saying I'm this great fencer, but I, I kinda am. Even when Jenna would talk about her acting, which is normally a very emotional and personal thing, I noticed Jenna, she would talk about herself and her body like she was just a machine that she could use and push on in order to get things done and accomplish the things that she wanted. If you drop all the muscles in your face, you just right. look sad. It's actually something that I do when I just like drop my face and my bangs move forward and then it's pretty easy. But every time before we started to take, Tim liked when I looked through my eyebrows, so I would rest my face, yeah. look through the eyebrows. As an individual, I was able to get over myself first couple days. Sometimes I push myself, even if I know I'm gonna lose my voice, just kind of fully commit. Okay, so the first time I looked at all these personality patterns together, I felt like they pointed in the direction of Jenner Ortega maybe being an INTJ personality type. She talks about being quite private. She seems introverted. Her castmates talk about her being like a real life Wednesday Adams. She's way too detached and unemotional to be an FP personality type. And I know for sure she definitely uses introverted intuition and extroverted thinking. And so INTJ, it seemed to make sense to me. And I actually even filmed a completely different version of today's video pointing more in that direction. However, <laughs> after re-watching the hours and hours of clips of Jenna Ortega for a second and third time, there were certain things about Jenna Ortega being an INTJ personality type that just didn't quite add up to me. First off, Jenna Ortega seemed to like talking about and playing around with extroverted sensing in a way that didn't seem very INTJ at all. Whenever she talked about things, she was actually very descriptive, quite clear and concrete in a way that that INTJ personality types, they're not usually really like that. I had this tank and the littlest, tiniest baby hole. Long tin foil. Start to put the plaster and after the plaster is on, seal on everything. And then they go from the top and they crack it. Another thing that wasn't adding up to me is normally INTJ personality types, they're a lot more long winded and meandery than Jenna Ortega ever was. During her interviews, Jenna was actually pretty quick to answer things. She never would really stew on things in her head for very long. There was always this directness, this efficiency about her. All right, what's your question? All right, this is my answer. What's your question? All right, this is my answer. Thing from her that is very, very not INTJ. I don't know, I, it was kind of crucial. When she was talking about things, she would never just keep going and going and going and going and going in the way that INTJ personality types, they tend to sometimes like doing. And then lastly, Jenna Ortega's introverted feeling. In my opinion, she uses way too little introverted feeling to be an INTJ personality type. INTJ personality types, they are logical and stoic, but if you really get to know them, they're actually quite passionate. They sometimes really feel things quite personally and they have this deep well of personal feelings that tends to slip out and like expressing itself sometimes in a way that I never saw Jenna show or care about. Anyway, so putting those personality patterns together, INTJ just really wasn't adding up to me. And so I paused working on this video and started digging around looking for more clips, more examples that would hopefully make this mystery clearer. And that's when I found this one clip that suddenly all the puzzle pieces just snapped together and it all made sense. Guys, I don't think Jenna Ortega is an SFP personality type or an INTJ personality type. Instead, 
I actually think she's an ENTJ personality type. Think about it, suddenly it makes so much sense why she sometimes sounds like an extroverted sensor. Why she has such a strong presence, seems so comfortable launching herself into extroverted sensing experiences sometimes. I will throw myself on the floor, off a wall, I'll drive cars at 90 to 100 miles per hour with stunt brakes that I've never used before in my life. Suddenly it makes sense why Jenna's always so unbothered, always has this push, this efficiency, forcefulness about her. She's an extroverted thinking dominant. I have stuff I need to do and water I need to drink, a face to wash, so I'll probably get to that. My first time giving advice, I think I was eight years old. I said, you're a wonderful mother. I said, she's a teenager. She's gonna have her rebellious years. And don't worry because a couple years from now, she's gonna regret it. And she's gonna come back to you and you guys are gonna be sweet and lovey or whatever. But I said, cut yourself some slack. I said, relax. You're gonna be good. And then lastly, suddenly it makes so much sense why she's always talking about herself like a machine. Always pushing herself to do more. Always so focused on working and working and working that she's never very comfortable slowing things down to introspect and listen to her inner personal feelings. I find myself being one of those people who's never truly satisfied. I'm working a ton and I'm telling myself, I just need a break, I need time to myself, I need to see my family and friends. But then when I spend time with my family and friends and I'm not working, then I'm freaking out because, man, when am I going to work again? And when am I going to be creative again? And I may not feel I need a break and I want to keep going and I want to keep pushing myself. When you are having trouble expressing yourself, even though it's kind of scary to confront yourself, get to know yourself better, even if you don't want to, I think it's essential and necessary. And while it may be a scary thing, I think in the end it will be very beneficial. So I personally am still working through that phase. I think in the end it'll be a beneficial. Isn't it crazy how even when Jenna's talking about taking care of herself and listening to her feelings, she talks about it like it's work, like it's a task that she has to do and get through. It's not at all what I was expecting, but the puzzle pieces really do fit together when you look at Jenna Ortega from an ENTJ personality type perspective. If any of you guys are confused about your personality type and wanted to talk with me, wanted to have a teaching session to help you discover your best fit personality type. My colleague and I actually have a teaching service that we've been doing behind the scenes, but this month we wanted to slowly start sharing with some of you guys. We've only got about five slots left open for January, but I'm sure more will be coming later. If any of you guys are interested in learning more and seeing if you qualify, there's an application linked down below in the description. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. It really means a lot. You are the change maker of your own life. Let's think more deeply. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, peace. Bye.